although we weren't planning on being in Guaymas this long, we've really grown quite fond of this charming little city. It's on the southwest tip in the state of Sonora. Um, small little city or port, I guess. And, you know, of course we would have loved to have been on the other side of the Sea of Cortez, swimming with whale sharks and turtles and catching fresh mahi-mahi. But that's life, you know, sometimes you just have to roll with the punches and unfortunately we're still getting some work done on the boat. We're still waiting on some safety equipment, our life raft, our life rings. But in the meantime, we're just kind of taking advantage of this place and, you know, it's really a beautiful, beautiful city. Saturday morning. Where are we headed? Go get some more sail drive oil. Some coolant for the engine. Earl and coolant. Peeps, how are you feeling today? Feeling fine. Thanks for asking. No problem. Corian? Feeling great. It's a little hot and humid, but it's good. Here we go.
eggs and bakey. Eggs and bacon, bacon and eggs. Bacon, eggs, eggins and bagans. I'm Corey, this is Allie, and this is the big cheese, the head honcho, the big kahuna, Captain Bill. Together with our trusty sidekicks, LP and Jasper, we quit our jobs, sold everything, and set out on a journey in search for land's beginning. Follow us as we vibe with Mother Nature one day at a time. some interesting finds here on the shores of Catalina Cove. Let's check them out. Next we have a puffer fish. share some thoughts on some observations of Limus and some interesting facts that uh, you know different than our sailing days so we spent a lot of time here and did a little research little uh, ideas of what happened what happened to Limus when it you know had had these days of uh, bustling activity and it seems that uh, it's related a lot to the shrimp industry. So uh, the history behind that is Mexico uh, had an export of about 70, I think it's like 70 million metric tons of shrimp a year. Most of it going to the U.S. Big shrimp eaters in the U.S. Wymus was producing 50 million tons of that. It's just incredible huge industry here and for years five years six years they were just pulling every shrimp out they could find and guess what happens when you don't restore things and you're not paying attention that's right fell apart in five years they went from 50 down to 12 and then the businesses that were here it was a big spanish company uh, they waited for five years for the population to come back 
never came back. They closed up shop. It's the the, end of the uh, factory is just right over to my left. It's vacant, nothing there. Shrimp boats are tied up and they're getting old and decrepit. Really sad. Uh, it was a big employer, 32,000 people in Mexico were employed, are employed by the, in the shrimp industry and in Wymus that disappeared. So no more employment and the economy, as you would expect, uh, a lot of shops closed up, businesses went out of business and things were pretty dire. What, what's interesting what we found was really interesting is is that you know people find a way and and I'd hand it to the Wymans if that's the word that they found a way to make a living and the way they did that was to set up their own little stops their own little retail right on the street so when you walk through town now there's vendors every 20 feet selling something doing something, this and that, bringing in their own goods. And that economy is now keeping those folks alive, paying their way, giving them a, a living. And so it's really interesting. That's that's not a government subsidy. That's not, uh, you know, some uh, big corporation. This is individuals finding a way to make it work. And I think that's pretty resourceful of the Mexicans here and shows you know the strength of people in general when they need to make things happen so that's that's kind of uh, you know my view of of Wymus. thank you very much for tuning in subscribe and whatever else you do to you know click on our site thank you Ooh.